Welcome to the American Institute of Stress's official podcast, Finding Contentment. The goal of this podcast is to highlight new information about stress and stress management techniques. While we understand that stress is a very personalized issue and different for everyone, we hope to help you find your own way to contentment. Hey, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Finding Contentment. This is your host and executive director for the American Institute of Stress. It's Will Heckman. Thanks for joining us today. If you've joined us in the past, welcome back. If you haven't, this podcast has to do with stress and stress-related issues. Stress is part of our lives. If you're, uh, if you do anything in life, I'm sure you felt some stress. Hey, make sure to follow us at stress.org. And, and if you have a chance, send in those reviews, send in those comments. I love hearing from you guys. And if you are watching on YouTube, I'm going to ask you to do what every other YouTuber does. Please hit the like button. Or, you know, if you're really feeling ambitious, go over there. I think it's in the corner over there. And hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Um, so, as I said, we're, we're all stressed. But do we really know why? I mean, it, you have to wait a minute. I, you, you may think you know. But in reality, it may be something to do with you and not your annoying boss or your job or money or whatever you may think it is, or traffic. Um, it is very important to learn what our personal stress triggers are and uh, you know what we do to try and fix a problem. And how do we fix a problem without first understanding what that problem is? We know that when A happens, we feel B or C, but sometimes it may not be A. It may, that may not be the problem. It may have to do with something, how we handle A. Uh, and what I'm saying is we, what we don't want is to, to turn into D, which stands for something diagnosable. And that does happen. Did you know that stress is said to be directly related to about 75% of doctor visits? That's a big number. So getting a handle on our stress, or better said, how we manage stress, can be very important. Uh, we're also finding that that number is growing, no big surprise, and that stress is playing an even more important role in our health than we re really thought it was. You know, Dr. Lewis Coleman, who is a fellow of the American Institute of Stress, recently made some really miraculous breakthroughs in understanding what stress is really doing to us. Um, the, the COVID pandemic may be pretty much over, but the stress pandemic lives on and it may live on for years. So the first thing we need to do is find out what that stress is really coming from or where it's really coming from. And that is why we added uh, something to the American Institute of Stress. It's a new stress assessment tool. Um, it, it's part of the many things we offer at stress.org. It just takes 15 minutes. It's the Roast Stress Profiler. Uh, we'll show you how well you are coping in 10 key areas of your life, including anger, worry, fear, financial stress, time pressures, whatever. The Rosh Stress Profiler was developed by a team of top experts led by the legendary stress scientist and author Paul Roche, who is a doctor and a protege of, of Professor Hans Selye, who was the scientist and the father of the original concepts of stress along with uh, Dr. Maynard Brussman, who was a leader in executive coaching. And also by our guest today, Mr. James Porter, a, a true pioneer who has been developed, who has developed numerous tools to help people understand and manage stress. Listen, there's a great video on our site. So if you go to stress.org and you look for the RSP, <coughs> we have a great um, uh, little video about that. And, and, like I said, Jim Porter is, is joining us today, and he's president of StressStop.com. Now, that's a company that's been providing stress management and resilience training and training materials to corporations, hospitals, governments, agencies, military bases for well over 30 years. And Jim is also the author and creator of many of the materials, which include dozens of workbooks, training videos, CDs, hundreds of articles, and also a weekly blog on stress management. 
and his work has been reviewed or reported on in major news outlets, including Good Morning America, Ladies Home Journal, the Associated Press, WCBS TV News, and the New York Daily News, and also as well as medical journals, including the Journal of Family Practice and the Journal of Cardiopulmonary Rehabilitation and the Journey of Biomedical Communications. It's also appeared on the CBS Morning News, and his articles on stress have been republished by Forbes, uh, Medical Daily, Apple, and Inc. Also, he has a book that's called Stop Stress This Minute. With, stop, the boy, that was hard to say, Jim. Stop Stress This Minute, uh, which has sold over 100,000 copies, including 6,000 copies just to the Mayo Clinic. He won the Silver Award from the National Health Information Awards, and Jim's video programs have been used in thousands of hospitals nationwide, including the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic at the Mind Body Clinic in Boston. And his workbook, The Stress Profiler, has sold over 400,000 copies. Also, he's been a presenter. He's presented for stress management seminars on site for Time, Inc., GlaxoSmithKline, Blue Cross Blue Shield, also the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and the CIA, as well as the American Heart Association, and Yale New Haven Hospital. Um, he's been a, break, a breakout presenter from many, many uh, different places, uh, including for the Navy and the Army. And we're also proud to say that he is a fellow of the American Institute of Stress. So help me in joining our friend, my friend, James Porter. Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Hey. Hey, Will. Great to be here. Thank you for that nice uh, introduction. You covered every aspect of my career. I felt like I was living it again. Um, yeah, I left out half of it. You know it. I mean, I, I can I can read that stuff, all that stuff that you've done. You actually did that stuff. So uh, yeah. thank you for doing it. Well, I appreciate uh, that. You know, it's funny. When I was in college and right after I graduated, I'd look at people's resumes and I'd go, how do they do get to do all that stuff? And now I look at mine, I go, man, I guess this is how you live long enough. You live long enough, yeah. <laughs> resume gets longer, it's basically. And then you get some lucky breaks. You know, one of my favorite gigs was uh, speaking at the CIA. They called me up at having gotten a couple hundred copies of my book, Stop Stress This Minute. And uh, they loved it. And so they asked me if I would speak there. And... That was such a cool gig. They have a little museum at the CIA, which is all the cool kind of James Bond stuff cool. that the CIA uses, but only up at the time I went, which is maybe seven years ago, only up through 1985. So you wouldn't believe the stuff they had that was already, you know, 30 years old. They wouldn't show you anything that was newer than that because they didn't want to give away any secrets. Right. There was like a corn cob pipe that was also a cell phone. You, you chewed on it to talk and you let go of it. You held it to listen. Um, they had, uh, what was some of the other stuff? Oh, I want had? one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they had, um, oh, they had a little a pack of cigarettes. It was a gun. Um, and they had a fish that you could put papers in. It was the size of a fish. It looked like a fish. It was made of plastic, but it was had a, a hole in it. And you could put papers in it, and then you could remote control, have it swim across the lake. Um, they also had, now imagine, this is technology that's been out of date since 1985. They had a dragonfly that had its mic, a mic on its nose, and you had a remote control, and you could fly that dragonfly uh, near. I'm not making this that's up. That's awesome. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you that in that resume that you just reeled off every word of, and thank you for that, um, there were some cool moments, and that, that was one of them, seeing that museum at the uh, CIA. And you've done a lot of different things, and you've been involved in, in the stress management business or a field for, for a very long time. Tell, take, a, take us back a little bit. Take a minute. Tell us how you started Stress Stop and why you did that. I was working at a company called Hartley Film Foundation for the, my kind of the first eight years of my career. And this was an older woman who made films on holistic health, parapsychology, and world religion. She really specialized in world religion. She loved world religion, Buddhism, Hinduism, mm -hmm. um, uh, Jainism, all kinds of religions that I'd never heard of until I walked into her front door in, back in the 1980s. Um, now, for me, all that stuff, now, I've, I've sort of come to embrace Buddhism as its practice as mindfulness now, 
But um, and so she introduced me to all that. But what I sort of saw is the most conservative thing I could do within this crazy organization, which, you know, back in the 1980s, even holistic health was kind of crazy, um, was to do programs on stress management because that fell under the category of holistic health. So I picked that because that was the only thing of all the things that she did. I mean, you know, she was making films back in the 80s about how, you know, a vegetarian diet could help prevent and cure cancer. Mm. Now that, that we, we know that to be true today, yes. but back then that was completely not accepted by the mainstream medical community. Whereas stress management, thanks to the man you mentioned earlier, Hans Selye, was because Hans Selye had published 1700 articles by that point and in medical journals. So I could do programs on stress management that would be readily accepted nationwide. And that I, I while I was working for her, I, I did three films and she was a filmmaker. I should have mentioned that. Um, so I did three films, but I financed them myself because she was kind of tough and I knew that it was going to be hard to last much longer than I did there. So I self-financed them. So I knew I could leave with them when I finally decided to go my own way. So that's how I started my business. And, and because you've been involved with that for so long, you're, you know, back in the eighties, when we talked about stress, it was a different conversation than it is now. And so I wanted to ask you, why do you feel that stress is so important for people to pay attention to now more than ever? Because I see, I see, you know, I mentioned it in the opening, there's this almost a stress pandemic now. Why, yeah. is it, why does it come to, I, is, is it just my job? But I hear a lot of other people talking about it too. Cops, yeah. firemen, military. It's affecting their lives. Why, why is it so important for people to pay attention to it? Well, there's, of course, lots of reasons. One is if you don't pay attention to, to it, it's pro you're probably going to end up with some sort of stress-related disease or concern or, or disorder or, uh, or problem, you know, just a health problem. And stress is, um, you know, the, a, a unrelenting stress is a risk factor for heart disease, anxiety, high blood pressure, uh, recurrent colds, uh, insomnia. So if you are not paying attention to the levels of stress in your life, um, then you may be ending up uh, immune system disorders of all um, kinds, uh, especially, especially autoimmune disorders. Now, you know, one of the things I always have to make clear is that stress isn't the only reason that you might end up with heart disease or high blood pressure, but it can be a contributing, a very important contributing factor. And sometimes, you know, like with heart disease, the three top uh, risk factors for heart disease are um, poor diet, lack of exercise and stress. So if you happen to have, you know, if you're a person who does get regular exercise and you have a good diet, it could be that stress is the cause of the problem. I, I knew a guy who was one of my clients years ago. He worked at Alcoa Aluminum. And he had, he told me, I, I, I checked off all the boxes. This is him talking, of course. I checked off all the boxes for having a healthy lifestyle. He said, except for one. I, I lived a very high-stress lifestyle. And he wound up getting a heart transplant. Oh. I, uh, there you go, folks. That's why. <laughs> That's so, a good reason to say, you, yeah. you know, and like you said, and I'm glad you said that it's not the only reason stress is not the only reason, but if you have other reasons, if you're not living the healthiest lifestyle, you can, if you, if you combine stress with that. Well, that's a, that's a, a, a recipe for disaster in your, in your health life. Um, the, recently on our site at stress.org, um, we've updated a lot of the statistics on stress. They, they're starting to, to come in and the numbers are very surprising. Uh, a lot of people are having to deal with many different stressors. Uh, people are still dealing with the, pan the pandemic stressors. They left not only health problems, but uh, just life problems like housing and businesses and jobs and things like that. It had a, and I asked this question knowing that, you know, there's no one answer, but how do people start to get a handle on things that are causing them stress? We, we talked about how, 
what it can do to you. How do you get a handle on it? Yeah. Well, one of the things I like to say is, um, and, and I say this, um, I want to say this carefully so that I don't mislead people, but stop p- popping pills for, for stress related yeah. concerns. You know, this is uh, insomnia is a great example of what I'm talking about here. You, you, 50%, we know the research tells us 50% of all insomnia is caused by stress. <laughs> now, uh, that's one of the things that insomnia, heart disease, high blood pressure, those are things where we really do have a, a pretty strong connection between stress and, and, and what's happening to you. So, so with, with uh, insomnia, we got a 50% chance it could be caused by stress. Now, you know, you're, you have insomnia, you want to do something about it. And the, and the first thing that comes to mind usually is some sort of medication, right? I mean, that's the way the whole world deals with uh, problems, medical problems. Uh, and so you go to your doctor, he prescribes you um, Halcyon, I think is the name. Or one Ambient. Of Ambient, that's yeah. the one I was thinking yeah. of. Ambient. And um, if you, and I, I challenge anyone who's listening today to go on the Mayo Clinic website and look up the side effects for Ambient. There are so many scary side effects, including um, uh, driving while asleep, uh, including having sex while asleep, uh, including, um, I mean, there's some crazy, like eating your breakfast while you're asleep. Um, And and those are just actually some of the milder uh, side effects. There's, There's some more scary side effects than that. So, so if, you know, you're willing, and, and I've read, it could be, this is something I read like 10 years ago, but that you get on average, when you take a sleeping pill, you get on average 30 minutes extra sleep a night. So are you willing to pay that price for 30 minutes? If that's true? Now, I, I, I haven't double checked that in a while. So it could be that, you know, maybe the, there's been improvements to medication. But here's my point. So you go to the doctor, the doctor gives you something and all he's doing in the case of a lot, any kind of stress related thing that you're taking medicine for, whether it's has to do with pain that's caused by stress, like a headache that might be caused by stress, um, or even high blood pressure, if it's caused by stress, chances are the medication you're taking is only taking away the symptom. It's right. not addressing the source of the problem. Now with high blood pressure, it's important to take away the symptom so you don't have a higher risk for heart disease. However, it just need people need to realize they're not addressing the source of the problem. They're just taking away the symptom. So they're able to sleep more, but they still, if they still have stress at work, they're going to have to keep taking that, that insomnia medication forever in, until the stress goes away. So that's why we need to get this un, under control. And we need to realize that every time you take a pill for a stress related concern, chances are it's only taking away the symptom and not addressing the source of the problem. You know, you're, you're so right. I mean, you go to a doctor, and what do they practice? Medicine. So that's their answer to most things, is to give you some more medicine. And that's not always, not always the best answer. I would not tell you not to take medicine that your doctor has prescribed, but I would tell you to think it out. Uh, you know, uh, you're right. It may not cure the problem; may just cure uh, the symptom. If if you're not sleeping, and by the way, when I talk to people about stress, uh, the top three that that complaint is insomnia, sleeping. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't, and and you really want to find out how important sleep is in your life, try not doing it. Yes, and, wa- and watch what happens to you. You won't, you won't be able to tie your shoe. Forget about anything else in your life. Uh, and that's just, as you pointed out, just that's normal things that you can like put your finger on. Like, okay, I'm eating my breakfast while I'm asleep. It's horrible to think that I'm having sex while I'm asleep. What a waste of time. But, yeah. <laughs> but, what about all the physiological things that taking some medications do to you? That, like, as right, you side said, effect. Yeah, side effect. look it up. Look what it does to your liver. Look what it does to, uh, to all the things. So we really need to get to the cause of the stress. And, and you have uh, helped develop the Roche Stress Profile, the RSP. Um, tell us a little bit about that. 
Because I think yeah. that is an important thing for people to understand. Well, it could lead to them um, to having a different approach to how to manage stress. But before we go there, I just want to say that uh, I want to remind people of the Hippocratic Oath, right. which is first, do no harm. That's the oath that every doctor takes when they get their medical degree. Now, if you think about all these um, side effects that we've been talking about with medications, you can't make that promise. You cannot make that promise. You know, there was a there was a court case, I think, in Canada where somebody murdered somebody while they were on either Ambient or maybe yeah. this Yeah, Ambient. And um somebody murdered someone and they their defense was, Hey, I was on Ambient, I was asleep while I did it. So, you know, look, I realize that these are exceptional, <coughs> oddball, um, almost one in a million things that that can happen, but there's no medication because they all have side effects where the, the, the company that's selling it can make the promise that all doctors are supposed to make, which is first do no harm. Whereas everything that I'm teaching you how to do, I can make that promise. Right. I can teach you how to meditate. I can teach you how to do progressive muscle relax relaxation. I can teach you how to do deep breathing. I can teach you the effects of, um, of um, exercise. So, you know, there is a side effect to meditating. Guess what? It's falling asleep. Yeah. It's, fun. it's funny because I was having some sleeping problems. And I, I one of those guys that, you know, I, I was an athlete, so I've been injured. And I was one of those guys who wouldn't even take a painkiller. And I came across a video of a guy demonstrating some sleeping exercises while doing some tapping. You're probably more familiar oh, with it than I am. You mean this? Actually, it was on my on my chest. Okay. And it it, it started out that you you tap quickly, uh, you tap faster than your heart rate, and then you start to slow down the tapping as you're counting your breathing, and before you know it, you fell asleep. Huh. That's a hell of a lot better than taking an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah, you told me one thing uh, once that that bears repeating about meditation, and I, I, I it was it made it really did make an impact on me. <coughs> I want you to know that. I want everybody else. I to appreciate that, that. Uh, Will. This it is. Really uh, I can't wait to hear what this is. It, it's it was so simple, but yet it was very illuminating. You said take out the motivation part of meditating. Do it like you brush your teeth. Just do it every day. Don't don't schedule it. Don't. It's part of your day. That's you just do it. Yeah. And that, that made that made that was like oh man a little light bulb went off in my head. I said you know what that's a, that's the perfect solution. Don't think oh well, I, um, what I I'm feeling this so I have to meditate. No, just do it every day. Do it for um, I don't know how long ten minutes. 15 minutes? Um, the, the research tells us that 20 minutes a day um, will result in uh, certain benefits that less than that might not. However, whenever you're starting a new habit, start small. The build to 20 minutes. Start with five minutes a day. Start with two minutes a day right after you yeah. wake up. So, uh, but yeah, make it a part of your daily routine. And, um, and then if you find that, wow, that five minutes was helpful, then that will motivate you to want to add more time to it. And it's, it's really simple to do. There's many ways to do it. Um, if you look on the gym's uh, West, uh, <laughs> um, website, Stress Stop, you'll, you'll, you'll find ways to do it. It's not that hard. Okay, so let's get back to, to how we find out what's really stressing us out. Because a lot of times we think it's something and it's not. It's sort of like um, you spend the, the, an hour going through traffic and it's driving you crazy and then you get home and you yell at your dog. It has nothing to do with the dog. So right, the right. raw stress profiler that you help develop gives people a, a roadmap. A, yeah. A, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a direction. Tell us about that, you know, yeah, well, you mentioned the 10 different areas, and uh, it's funny, I don't have those 10 different areas on the tip of my tongue, but I, I can 
probably produce five, uh, and and that which include anger, uh, worry, um, uh, control, whether you feel like you're in control of your life, um, social support, resilience. Um, um, anyway, like I said, I knew I could come up with five. I can't always come up with 10 off the top of my head. But the idea is by categorizing the different areas of stress, you start to see exactly where your stress is coming from and the areas where you need help, where you can improve. You know, there was a client of mine. Uh, we, most of our clients are businesses. And this was actually a business uh, out in Ohio, I believe, uh, Certified Angus Beef. And the wellness director for that company told me a story that I really love about the stress profile. She said that um, they have an on-site doctor at the, at the, in the organization. And if you want a prescription or anything like that, you can see the doctor. If the doctor comes in once a week. And so this one particular new hire I met with was meeting with the uh, wellness director. And she was saying, you know, I really have a problem with anxiety. Um, and I'd like to get a prescription for that from the doctor. And my friend, who was the wellness director, said, well, you know what? Why don't you take the online stress profiler, what we now call the Roche stress profiler, um, and, um, and, and, and come back and see me in a week, and we'll talk, see where you are, see if that gives you some insight. And after she took it, she, she did well, and, and there, it's kind of um, color-coded. So if you get a green, uh, if you're... If you're in the green, for that means you got a low score. If you're red, that's high score. So she got green in nine out of ten areas, and she said, "Wow, I'm a, I'm less stressed than I thought." The only areas she got a high score was time pressure. She said, "Before I take that anxiety medication, I'm going to work on time pressure." So I love that story because it illustrates how the taking the profiler can actually be prescriptive. It make give you a real idea of what is stressing you out. Imagine, you know, either not having to take a, uh, a medication or coming off a medication, coming off a blood pressure medication. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I've done that myself. Uh, and that's possible. And, yeah. and the, and the profiler would help you see the causes of your stress, but if you were coming off any medication, you'd want to do that with the supervision of your doctor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't. I'll tell you right now, my doctor looked at me like I had two heads when I said I just wanted to stop taking blood pressure medicine. He made me have my. I, I was an educator at the time, and he made me go down to the nurse every day and have her take my blood pressure, <coughs> find it. <laughs> That it, uh, that it was actually down for two weeks, and it was, and then he he weaned me off the blood pressure medicine. Wow, so absolutely. wow. I'm, glad, I'm glad that you brought that up. That's, so, that's but but this has, the RSP has been used. It's not something new. It's not something that we we just ju just came out. It has been used. Tell us a couple of other places that it's been used. The one that I saw that was very impressive was NASA. Yes, NASA bought 11,000 copies of it. That was back when it was a workbook and uh, uh, you took the test, um, not online, but you took it right. <coughs> with this little booklet form. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield has been an organization there. There are different names like Anthem and um, Independence Blue Cross um, and those different blues. Usually back in the day when they were buying the uh, booklet form they, they buy tens of thousands of copies and um, so it was that's how we got to 400,000 copies but nowadays you're, we're delivering it online and the U.S. Senate is using it the House of Representatives uh, the post office uses it um, the Coast Guard um, who else um, MIT um, they're all using our platform which features this the stress profiler now the raw stress profiler <coughs> is the same set of questions, but it's delivered in a slightly different way where, where you're just focused on the stress profiler. Yeah, and, and the response to it has been really good. I have to tell you, um, at stress.org, we've been getting a really good response to it. And I, I and put it out in our newsletter, by the way, if you want our newsletter or the free magazines, go to stress.org and just sign up for it. Everything is free. <laughs> We give away a lot of free stuff. Yeah, and that's a great magazine. There's no better magazine on stress than Contentment. Oh, Amazing. It, Absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah. And content uh, and combat stress is coming out soon. And for 
a special bonus. I wrote an article this year. So oh, wow. <laughs> it, it was, it, it was uh, just one of those things that I did and I, I just wrote about it, but, but now that you can do it online uh, and you can get a real good sense of it, what kind of feedback are we're getting very positive feedback. Are you getting from all these companies that are using it? Well, um, it's it's the kind of the go to piece in our platform. So <clears throat> um, people like the simplicity of it, uh, the usability of it, uh, the the feedback they get from it. So yeah, we get a very positive response from just about everybody about the profiler. I, I have I have to agree. That's a, it's, and it doesn't take long. No, about fifteen minutes. Yeah, fifteen minutes. I mean. If you're feeling uh, stress that some people are expressing to me, yeah, it take the 15 minutes. So, I, and tell me what to what do should people expect when they take the assessment? Well, um, you know, after they take it, they're going to get um, a summary of of where they need help. So. They're going to find basically we call them your target areas. So, you so the ten sections and um, let's say time pressure, um, uh, maybe stress symptoms is another section and anger. So now you find out that those are where you got your three highest scores. And so we're giving you resources for you to be able to go back, take the test again, and lower your scores in that area so you can actually. That's the really cool thing is you can yeah. bring down your score and uh, and make improvements in your lifestyle. So once they've taken the RSP, they take this the assessment, uh, they get a report saying, hey, you got a problem here, here, and here. You're doing okay here, here, and here. They can also get recommendations and then take it again and see if they're working. That's exactly right. And there's resources that are built in that are directed toward you. Um, little videos to watch, articles to read, um, things to do, quick tips that you're going to get for your particular, for your three highest scores. Now, you know, those quick tips, articles, videos are in there for all 10 sections. So whatever you score high in, that's where you're going to get. So if you take it again and you got different high scores, you'll get different tips, different articles, different videos to watch. So that's really cool. I mean, it's really personalized. You're not just taking uh, something that has nothing to do with you. If you take the raw stress profiler, you're going to get a report that has to do with you and uh, some some suggestions and some help for you personally. I mean, that's 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 a lot. I mean, that's that's a big big deal because um, stress is a very personalized issue. Yes, it's different for everyone. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, something that stresses you guys out out there it may not stress me out, and things that stress me out, you may think I'm insane. Yeah, Why is that well, bothering you? Well, it, it does. It's, it's funny that you should mention that because I remember sitting down with Dr. Paul Ross, who is the namesake of this profiler, when when we when I was first making it, and this is quite a while ago. And he his favorite example is a roller coaster. Some people love it. <laughs> And other people hate it. And I have a picture that I use in my slideshows that I just love because it shows these two women and they're in a on a roller coaster and they're obviously about they're coming down the hill. And one woman is just delighted and she's got and she's holding the hand of it's obviously her friend, and she's holding the hand of her friend who is just like terrified. And this is the class, this is what Rosh was always talking about. This is what makes stress difficult to diagnose because you can't agree. We can't agree on what's stressful for people. It's funny you should bring that up because, yeah, I'm afraid of roller coasters. Oh, I don't like them. I, yeah, I'll ride a motorcycle and sometimes um, too quickly, but I will not go on a roller coaster. And there, I have people who will tell me, though, riding a motorcycle is very stressful. To me, it's the most relaxing thing in the world. That's why this is so great. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Paul Roche was the founder of the American Institute of Stress, and he did it at the behest of Hans Selye. So, I mean, there's there's a history here of, of you, you know, of real scientists working on this. 
um, and you'll be able to use the results of this stress profile, the Roche stress profiler, to really, really help yourself. Have I left anything else out about it? I mean, I know you, I, are you giving away two free gifts with it also? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, it's a, it gets, gets more amazing as we talk about it. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, you get a, there's a journal um, for keeping track of your stress, which is something that I really believe in, by the way. And I can't get people to do it. And yet I'm really, I'm going to tell a little story about journaling. When I was creating this stress management journal, which is just a, it's, it's delivered to you electronically, but it's a workbook that's back here on my shelf. And um, uh, it's 32 pages. And and I said, well, if I'm going to create this stress management journal for people, I really got to do this, right? I got to keep a journal of my stress. And really what I'm asking people to do is not necessarily, you know, keeping a diary of everything that happens with commentary. What I'm really wanting is just a log of all the little stressful things that bug you throughout your day. Now, when I did this 20 years ago, um, I kept a little spiral notebook in my back pocket. I think Paul Roche told me this is what you have to do. Go get yourself a little spiral notebook, keep it in your back pocket, and write down anything that stresses you, right? So, at, um, and then I would transfer that to a bigger notebook, and I, and I made a point of not looking at it until I'd done two weeks' worth of notation, right? So at the end of two weeks, I, I was looking through it and I had a major aha experience because I noticed that I was experiencing stress in the bank, the grocery store, and the Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, what with the notation that I, I'd written a little note about what I was doing in each place, and guess what? I was doing the same thing in all three of those places. Now, do you want to guess what it was, Will? I, I, I'm, the first thing that came to my mind is you were paying for something, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's every, that's a lot of people's first guess. Yeah. And then the second guess, if that's their first guess, is waiting in line. Oh. So you see what that journal journaling activity taught me, and everybody can get one of these journals free with the profiler, um, is that it wasn't the DMV, it wasn't the grocery store, it wasn't the bank that was stressing me out. It was the fact that I had to wait in line. And there were ways to avoid that. I was banking on Fridays. Um, I called up the DMV and they said, come in the middle of the month. The lines are much shorter. And, you know, I was probably going to the, to the grocery store on a weekend or something. You know, I can't remember exactly right. what it was. But there are times, you know, you can go on a Tuesday and there's going to be nobody in the store. So I realized I needed to do that for my own mental health, right? Not, to, not only that, but, but the mere fact that you found that information out meant that you could do something about it. Right. Even, even if you could not avoid standing in line. Okay, I know I'm going to be standing in line. Let me make sure I bring my headset with me so I can listen to music and do something that will alleviate that that wait time and maybe bring down yeah. my stress levels. That's why it is so important to take something like the Rush Stress Profiler because it gives you a clue into what is really stressing you out. And it helps you do something because the one thing you should never do about stress is nothing. So if you're really stressed out and your life is so stressful and you're feeling, you're starting to feel bad about it, you're going to have to do something about it. And if it's keeping a little notebook on you, making a notation, or just at the end of the day, writing it down. I'm a big believer in journaling too. You know, I, I think it's, it's a great idea and it's very, very cathartic. So this stress management journal that you get with when you buy the stress profiler is the Rush stress profiler is... It's not just a bunch of blank pages. There's tips and and uh, ideas. It follows. There's really a curriculum to it, so that you're learning about sources of stress the first week and cognitive restructuring. I think is the third week where you understand how your thinking has a major role in in the stress you experience. So, so there's a there's a curriculum that the whole thing. Oh, underlying sources of stress. I learned that. Um, years and years ago, and um, it really uh, opened up my eyes. So I have people looking for underlying causes of stress. Let me give you an example of that. Um, so you're stuck in a traffic jam, right? And you say, oh, these traffic jams always stress me out. Well, chances are it's not the, the traffic jam. Chances are it's the fact that you have to be someplace mm -hmm. 
by a certain time. So it's not the traffic jam, it's time pressure. So uh, for me, you know, it wasn't, it really was waiting in line. I just don't like being stuck in line. Uh, but but uh, it, it could have been time pressure. So looking for underlying sources of stress is really important. I'm trying to think of what are some other examples of that. But there are five sort of classic underlying sources of stress. One would be uh, relationship problems, money problems. You know, so you think you're having an argument with your wife, and it's really you're arguing about money. So you think, oh, my, my wife is really annoying. But um, <laughs> it's really the fact that you guys are need to, you know, you, you don't have enough money or something like that. So when you start looking below the surface at what is really driving the bus here, um, this is one of the, the, you have a whole week of curriculum on underlying causes of stress, a whole week of curriculum on um, on uh, how you're thinking is a source of stress. So, so that's one of the cool things about it. And then you also get a uh, relaxation audio. It's always been our best-selling audio. And you, you listen to that. A lot of people have trouble meditating. You can get into a meditative state in about five minutes listening to this. And it's been our best-selling And that's a, a day away from stress? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's, so folks, listen, if <laughs> think about all the things you get just by taking this assessment, the assessment itself is invaluable. I mean, just to know what it is that you have to work on and actually know, not just think what it is, is um, going to be an immense help. Look, if you had a broken arm, you go to a doctor, you fix your arm. The stigma of, uh, attached to having to be too stressed out, those days are gone. Those days are gone. If you're so stressed out, you need to do something about it. I think Jim would agree with me. Um, and Jim, I want to thank you for joining us today. We're running out of time. There are so many issues about stress that we could literally talk every day for forever. <laughs> and not really cover everything because stress is different for everyone, for, for you and for I. Yep. So thanks, for, for first of all, for doing all that you do at Stress Stop, for developing this assessment. It's, it's such a big help to so many people. Well, thank you. It's, um, uh, it's something that's kind of, uh, you know, it's what I, uh, I, I love. I, I can never... I've been doing this now for 35 years, and um, it's it's a topic that never gets boring. It yeah. never. It's so interesting, and that and that's why you're you're the person I want to talk to. Is because is because of your passion to help people uh, with their stress issues. And, and if you want to know more about the products um, that Stress Stop has, just go to stressstop.com. It's real, real simple. They're right there, or you can. Come to our site at, at stress.org and look in our store. We we feature some of the products from Stress Stop as well, and you can get the raw stress profiler there. Um, so I want to thank you, Jim, for joining us today, and thank all of you for watching or listening. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Please hit the like button, and don't forget you can leave a comment. You can uh, even subscribe. So make my day. Uh, bring my stress levels down. So this has been your host, Will Heckman. I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, remember, your support is what help keeps this podcast going. And again, I just want to remind everyone, just as stress is different for each of us, there's no one stress reduction or management strategy that is right for everyone. So that means join us next time and you find out about the tools and techniques that you can use to live a healthier, happier and maybe a longer life. And I hope the information that you heard today from Jim and myself will help you all find good. So good day, everyone. <laughs>